Hello friends, my name is Virinder and uh, welcome you to my YouTube channel Cloud Ninja. So in the last video we studied that uh, what is uh, AWS CDN or Content Delivery Network and uh, why should we be using it and uh, how it really impacts the performance at the user end when user will be using the AWS CloudFront or CDN. So in this video we will uh, study about the five step process that how to create a CDN. So in the next video, we'll see an actual demo, but uh, let's try to understand it from a theory perspective first. So, you know, in the last videos, we studied that what is CDN, that is Content Delivery Network, CDN. So, let's break this down again and give you a brief uh, overview. So, what we are trying to do is we are trying to deliver a content through the through a network, what is the content? Content could be your media files, your could be CSS files, HTML files. So this is the content which is lying somewhere and we are trying to deliver this content to the edge locations or the AWS data center so that customer can directly access the content from the uh, basically your uh, edge locations rather than each and every request coming to your HTTP server. So in this video, we'll study that, okay, what is step one and uh, what we do in step two, then uh, subsequently three, four, and five. So in simple five steps, we'll try to understand that uh, how I see the content will be delivered to the edge location. So first of all, uh, what is step one? Now step one, uh, before I move forward, see, what we are talking is we are trying to deliver a content. So the content, which is see, it must be lying somewhere if you are using a web server or uh, in case you are using the AWS cloud, then there could be two possibilities. Either your origin server is the uh, Amazon S3 bucket or it could be a HTTP server which is lying onto the Amazon EC2, that is the Elastic Cloud Compute. So first of all, we need to define that, okay, what is our origin server? So we need to configure our origin server first. This is where our content is lying. Basically, we are building this content which needs to be delivered to the edge locations. So from here only our content will move further with the help of our Amazon Cloud Fund. So first of all, we need to define this origin server. So as I said, origin server stores the original or definite version of your objects. And if you are serving your content over HTTP, the origin server is either an Amazon S3 bucket or HTTP server such as the web server. And uh, similarly, uh, you know the, this, uh, you can use this Amazon EC2 uh, instance and build up your web server over there. And you can serve both the purposes, uh, like, uh, you know, you can uh, use this uh, media files, uh, or your, uh, how, what do you say this, uh, your origin server could be having a media files like MP3 or MP4 files using the, uh, you know, media server or MTP protocol. So, you know, Amazon says that in case you are trying to distribute or uh, user, user would be accessing, you know, media files or you are trying to distribute the, uh, you know, media files in that case your origin server, origin server should always be Amazon S3 bucket. So this is our step one. Now, what is our step two? Now, step two is we have, in step one, we have decided that, okay, we'll be configuring our uh, origin server. It could be Amazon S3 or HTTP server. Now, you can see in the diagram over the right-hand side that in the second step, we'll be uploading the objects onto the Amazon S3 or our origin server so that once we'll upload those objects, only those objects will be, you know, will be passed onto the edge location so that user can access it and have a better performance. So in step two, you know, you'll upload your uh, files to the origin server. So files are known as objects, typically your web pages, images, or media files. And uh, it could be anything that can be served over HTTP protocol. So you can see that in this slide, we covered step one and step two, basically configuring your origin server and the loading the content on your uh, origin server. So it is like, building an FTP server and then uh, transferring the content to the FTP server. Do not relate FTP rows, just to give you an example of that. So what we'll be doing in uh, step three, so you can see that in this slide, step three, four, and five I are highlighted in yellow color. So in uh, step three, basically we'll be creating a cloud front distribution. 
So what is the cloud front distribution, which tells the cloud front that, okay, which origin servers to get your file. So basically what we are doing over here is, now you can see that this is, you know, basically a mediator we are creating between the Amazon cloud front and our origin server. So through this, with the help of uh, this cloud front distribution, it will be telling the Amazon cloud front that, okay, which will be your, uh, which will be your uh, origin server, it is a, uh, Amazon S3 or an HTTP bucket, so that it could be using that particular origin server to get the content from. So in this, uh, we, we are just telling the, okay, we are creating a cloud front distribution so that it can talk between the Amazon cloud front and the origin server. So in this step four, uh, basically Amazon cloud front will give a, you know, DNS name or the name name to your, uh, to your uh, new distribution which you have created and, uh, you know, it would be like this, uh, you know, the, you know, 1111abcdefa.cloudfront.net. So that it should be accessible or a path could be given over the uh, public internet to the to the data which you will be accessing from the uh, Amazon S3 bucket. So what we'll be doing in the step 5? So in the step 5, CloudFront, which is over here, which was, uh, you know, send your distribution configuration but not your content to the edge location so that user should be able to access the content from the edge locations with having, uh, you know, less time or less delay or low latency so that each and every time user query should not be going to the origin server. It should be accessible, uh, user data should be accessible to the edge location. So what you, you know, what Amazon CloudFront is, it is basically distributing the configuration information so that the content could be cached at the edge locations. To edge locations we said in the last video are basically nothing but the AWS data center with, through which it operates and in, uh, it is in different geographical dispersed data centers where CloudFront actually copies your content or objects onto the edge locations. So what we did over here is we created our region server, then we uploaded the objects onto that. Then in third, we created a, you know, basically a web distribution which acts as an intermediary between the cloud front and the origin server. Now in the fourth step, a domain name was given so that any image or any media file which is lying over here, a, a routable path could be given to that so that a user from the internet could access it through the URT generation. So now when you will be developing your application, you will be using that domain name which we used in, in, in step four definitely give the path like I said before. So similarly, let's say the cloud front just uh, this given us this particular domain name. So to really let's say if there is an image lying in in the S3 bucket, so you'll be giving a path like this, HTTP, just on the DNS which was given to us, then the uh, name of the image which is lying in the S3 bucket. So in this way, this is the whole path through, because that is why it is given that domain name so that it should be accessible over the internet, whatever data is lying between the S3 or your your web server. Now in addition to that, you can also configure the header to the file so that you can decide that, okay, what could be the TTL value of the data which will be lying at the edge locations so that after that it expires and you need not to pay for that because Amazon will be charging for that. So this is it friend, the next video will uh, meet you on the demo that how to actually create a five steps onto this. So thank you for watching this video, if you really like this video please hit like button, do share it with your friends and uh, lastly do not uh, forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can get the updates onto the latest videos we will be uploading. Thank you friends, thank you.